So today I'm going to do an elevator briefing on the Palais d'Avignon, or the Palace in Avignon. Um, just a little bit of background. Uh, the Palais began uh, to be built in 1252 and was finished in 1309. Um, and eventually it became, or as a uh, base of Christian power for the Pope uh, Clement V, uh, after he was elected in 1305. And this was just a way to bring a Christian power base into France. Uh, additionally, the French king at the time, uh, the Cape uh, King Philip IV, was in a little bit of economic trouble um, through a series of wars with uh, the French and the Gascons, or excuse me, with the English and the Gascons. Um, he brought just a series of debt uh, and a lot of money that he owed to the church and he owed to the people um, and the devaluation of his currency because of a series of financial just misfortunes uh, and poor decisions. So the vision of why he wanted to create or why the Palais um, the Avignon was important uh, was because it brought Christian power, uh, brought the center of Christian power away from Rome and instead brought it into France and it also added more religious support, leg legitimate religious support for the king. Uh, the best strategies in order to do this uh, were to construct the Palais um, as a holy place away from Rome and instead in France. That way it could bring uh, especially more legitimate power from away from Rome and into France instead, uh, and use the that power to get religious tithes from to get papal tithes um, in order to get stuff from the monasteries and from these churches and pay the king because before that it was you know you couldn't necessarily get money from churches because they didn't have to pay taxes. Uh, the final piece of strategy would be to bring the Pope under the control of the king. Uh, that way, essentially, the king could become in control of the church through the Pope. Um, there's a series a series of tactics in order to do this. One, uh, the first one is in order to boost the treasury, uh, the king needed to get as much, he needed to get money from the church, and in order to do that, he needed to go through Pope, pope Clement V. Um, and if he brought the papacy to France, if he brought the Pope to France uh, and established France as a religious power base instead of Rome, it would be much easier to get those religious tithes as such, in, because he wouldn't be able to, or he wouldn't need to uh, reach out to the Pope um, who was hundreds of kilometers away in the Holy Roman Empire um, because he was, because the Pope instead was in Avignon. Uh, this also made it easier for the king to control the pope. When the pope was closer, uh, the king had the religious power, uh, or excuse me, the king had the military power over the pope. Um, and because of the close proximity of the pope, uh, or because of the close proximity to the king, uh, the pope was then obligated to show fealty because... France was not the Holy Roman Empire. France was under the rule of Philip IV at the time and under the rule of the Capetian kings. <clears throat> As such, Philip IV was then able to use Clement as a religious puppet, as a figurehead in charge of the church when in reality it was Philip in charge of the papacy. Another like major use um, and tactic of the Pope in the Palais uh, was that it was able to uh, exonerate the debts that Philip IV owed to the church because the church helped um, the church gave loans to Philip IV in order to help him pay off his debts um, so that he would be able to gain better control over his own economy and help his own economy recover. If he controlled the Pope, then he would be able to exonerate his own debts. Additionally, 
um, he would be able to get rid of the Knights Templar because the Knights Templar only answered to the Pope. The Knights Templar did not listen to the king because they didn't need to because they were um, only following the religious orders of the Pope. But if the king got rid of the Knights Templar entirely, then nobody would be higher in terms of Christianity or Christian importance or Christness uh, than the king because the king controlled the Pope and the Pope put the power in the king and the Knights Templar who only answered to the Pope was eliminated then there would be nobody else to stand in the way of the king gaining full and complete religious Christian power. Now moving the papacy to France to Avignon and away from the Holy Roman Empire is a major maneuver. It's a major change in terms of um, in terms of extending the rule and extending the power of the Capé. This this maneuver allowed him to gain as much religious control as possible. It allowed him to or excuse me, it allowed Philip uh, to put more legitimacy to his uh, rule, to his crown, and it also brought him closer in terms of godliness to God himself, uh, and instead brought it, brought him from a divine ruler, from somebody who was assigned by God to somebody who was the closest thing to God, because before that it was the Pope, and now it's him. 